So, Jiva, we've looked at um, scalar types, numbers. Uh, what other types of types do we have available to us? What's the next thing we should need to look at? Well, you know, obviously, life would be pretty boring if all we could store were numbers. Um, there's all different kinds of types uh, available, and we'll talk about objects and, and pointers and things like that in a little bit. But another type of another type <laughs> that's uh, that's used a lot in Objective C is a special kind of a type that enables you to sort of combine um, scalars or or any type of variable really together into kind of a nice neat little package. Uh, and that type is called a structure. Okay. Uh, and some, it's also, it's known as a struct, uh, uh, you know, in a short form, because that's the keyword that's used to declare a structure. Um, so basically, a struct enables you to um, take one or more variables of other types and kind of put them together in this in this little package by themselves. And, and then you can declare new variables that are of that struct type. So for example, if we take a look at this um, example application here, now in this particular case, um, this little example application won't actually compile because we don't have this uh, move cursor to point function um, created. This is more for the purposes of just showing the declaration and use of the structure. But um, where we really want to focus here is actually on this new guy here, which is declaring a struct called my point. Mm -hmm. um, and in this particular case, it actually has two member variables. It's got this x value and this y value. And the idea is this is a this is a point in an xy grid system. So right, you're okay. creating this point that has an x and a y and you'll eventually plot that out. That's what maybe this move cursor to point function might actually do is it might move your cursor to that particular location. So that's what you so this is how you declare a structure. You basically start off with this struct keyword and then you give that structure a name just like any other variable name. But the interesting thing here is that what you're doing here is you're not actually naming a variable. Instead, you're actually creating sort of your own type. You're creating this okay. structure type that you will then reuse later to actually declare an actual variable. So, I mean, we've all called our structure here my point. Right. And then later on, we're declaring var variables of type my point. Exactly, exactly. So we create this structure here, my point, and then right down here, we're actually declaring a variable that is of type struct my point. So we have, again, we use the struct keyword here, and then we use the type of struct, which is a my point struct, and then we're creating the variable name here is p. So right, so that is slightly different. We can't just declare my point. We have to also use the struct keyword to say this is a struct type. Correct. Okay. Um, now, once you've declared this uh, structure like this, then you can actually access the member variables of that structure using the dot operator. So, for example, if I wanted to access the X member of the point of the my point P that I've created, that I've declared, then I can say P dot X equals 20, which is what we're right, doing okay. here on this line here. Okay. Same thing with the uh, with the y member. We can say p dot y is equal to fifty. So we're doing so. What we're doing there is we're saying I've got this p variable, which is of type my point, and that my point has two member variables x and y, and I'm I've created this p and I can access x and y by using that dot operator. So I can say p dot x and then I can assign a value into it. Okay, so I'm guessing this is really makes life quite convenient. It does. I mean, we could have just declared x as a variable. We could have declared y as a variable. Right. I guess the move cursor to point um, function could have taken x and y variables as parameters. Right. But by this has basically allowed us to effectively create a group of variables together and identify them together as, a, as an entity. Right. You know, if you think about like this example where you're dealing with this point, you know, in, in a grid system, it doesn't really make much sense to, to be dealing with just an X or just a Y coordinate. You want to be able to, you're almost always going to have X and Y together. So it makes sense to sort of group those and make all of your functions take X and Y together as one object and, and, uh, and do whatever 
needs to be done with those. So now in this particular case, I mean, you might say, oh, you know, just a couple of variables, not that big of a deal, right? But think about if you have a whole bunch of complex things that all go together, um, maybe you've got 10 different variables that all, you know, that save your game state or something along those lines, right? It makes sense to kind of group those together into a structure if they always go together. And that way you only have to declare your functions and, and um, methods to take that structure instead of all of the individual entities. Now, these structures are, they're, de they're getting declared on the stack and therefore the scope rules all apply to them? Absolutely, yeah. Just like, you know, the, the, uh, the my point, the P there is just like any other uh, variable. Uh, so that guy, you know, has all the same scoping that um, that any of the uh, of the um, of, of the other variables that you might declare there would would have. Um, same thing with that struct. So now, one of the things, one of the uh, other common um, things that comes up is the idea that well, you know, we have this this uh, this struct my point. P, you know, it gets a little bit long to type out this, you know, struct and then the the, the, the structure type and then the variable name. Um, wouldn't it be convenient? Wouldn't it be cool if I could like almost sort of like modify Objective C to add my point as a type specifically for um, for for uh, declaring these variables? So I could leave off that struct keyword all the time, right? I'm guessing we can, otherwise we you can. wouldn't have yes, raised otherwise it. Otherwise, and... I wouldn't have brought up the point. <laughs> yes. So, um, looking at this other example, we can actually use a, another keyword, uh, which is the typedef keyword. Now, typedef basically is short for type define, and it enables you to say, I'm going to, from now on, whenever you see this word, replace it with this other word. And um, that's essentially exactly what uh, what we can do with these structures is we can use this type def uh, line here so that we're actually saying type def this struct and call it my point. So in other words, we're going to create this structure uh, with the same member variables x and y, but we're saying and everywhere you see the word my point, replace it with this structure guy here, right? So that enables us then instead of doing struct uh, my point p, I can now just say my point p. Now we're not having to care about the struct keyword. Right. We just get on with it. And the cool part is you look at that and you say, wow, this is just like um, you know, basically I've defined my own type here. I you know I'm I'm a first class citizen. I can say my point just like if I put int there or something along those lines. So now I've got this type that's actually um, uh, my structure, and again, I can use it just like I did with the with the structures that uh, with the structure that I had before, where I can assign to the member variables and stuff like that, and I can use it just like I did um, before with the move. Effectively, it is still the same struct. Exactly. It's just we don't have to keep declaring it as a struct because the type def has sort of done that for us. Exactly. In a sort of a, you know, a once and for all way that we don't do to do it all the time. Exactly. Now you can also, um, you know, those those types that we've got inside of this structure, the X and the Y and stuff like that, you know, we've been dealing with a lot of scalar types and things like that, right? But another cool part about these structures is you can actually make structures that are composites of other structures. Okay. So for example, let's say that we had um, a line that we wanted to make with two points, a beginning and an end. Okay, that's what this example here does. So, for example, um, we can create this point structure, and Just again, same, same yep. thing like we did before, and then we can create another structure that is a line structure, and it actually has my points in it for the start and the end values, and so we can use those just like we did with the um, with the with the structures that we had before. Now that's interesting because that declaration of that struct can still just say my point because of the type def previously on. Exactly. So even in other declarations of other structs, we don't need the struct keyword because the type def is, exactly. is doing it for us. And I see again, we're using type def on, on the my line one as well. So it, is yep. it really saying if you're doing structs, probably just do type def? Yeah, I, you know, a lot of people use type defs with structures because it just makes it a little bit more convenient. Um, 
you don't have to, but it just makes it a little bit easier to, to read. Again, it comes back to that, you know, write your code for the guy who's going to read it six months from now. And remember that six months from now, even when you're reading it, it's like somebody wrote that, somebody else wrote that code. Yeah. So I'm sure I didn't write most of the code I wrote six months exactly. ago. Exactly. <laughs> I wish I hadn't write most of the code I wrote six months ago. It's more like the case. <laughs> now, um, another thing that I wanted to point out about this particular example is that um, I changed the way that we're initializing these structures. Now, when we're dealing with scalars, a lot of the time I would show where we were just doing an integer and the variable name and then assign a value to it. Now, you can assign a value to it there just at the initialization. You can also declare the variable and assign a value to it later. And when we were dealing with the structures that we were dealing with before, essentially that's what we were doing. We created our point and then we assigned values to each of the members mm -hmm. separately on separate lines. Now it's possible to also initialize the values of a structure right as part of the declaration as well. To do that, you use this special syntax where you're again using those curly braces to pass each of the values of each of the member variables separated by commas. So you're basically saying like on this first line here, I'm creating a point that's the start and I'm passing in two values X and Y separated by commas. Um, and those will be assigned to those member variables X and Y. They need to be in the, in the correct order to match the structure. So they need to be in the same order as the variables are declared within the structure. Correct. Yeah. And so we can do that here. So we do that here for start. We do that here for end. And then we're doing that here again for the line structure where we're just taking that start and that end structure, those start and end struct instances and passing those as parameters to initialize the line structure. That's, that looks a little bit more elegant, doesn't it? It does. It's nice and clean. And, you know, again, it comes back to that sort of um, using variable names that are descriptive here. You know, we're using start to indicate the start of the line. We're using end to indicate the end of the line. And we're using line as the line itself. And here we're reusing that start and end. And it's very clear. It makes a lot of sense. You can read it and you can say, oh, OK, that's my start value and this is my end value. And there you go. So we, we're no longer just numbers, no longer just scalars. We can, we can be more structural. Right. Now, structs are cool, right? Um, but they really center around just having sort of packages of data that you can, that you can um, pass around. Um, when we deal with objects, that's when it really kind of gets even cooler because we can do all the same kinds of things with objects, but we can also um, create methods which will operate on the data in the object. When you're working with a structure, you only have data. You can't actually create methods as part of the structure right. that, that manipulates that data. When we're dealing with objects, you get data and you get functionality in there. And that's really cool. Okay, so that makes sense. So a structure is just about data, and objects is about data and code that works on that data. Right. And, you know, I mean, we talk about ob object-oriented programming, or we have talked about object-oriented programming a little bit, and we've talked about, you know, well, you've got Objective-C, you know, that object part of Objective-C. Um, everything that we've really talked about so far really doesn't have an awful lot to do with object-oriented programming, but that's really where the power of Objective-C comes from, and um, that'll be coming up. I mean, in fact, real realistically, we can say actually everything we've done so far is C. Yes. We've, we've not got to the objective bit. What, did I exactly. really just do that? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just did do that. <laughs> we've not got to. Okay, and we've still got more to go through before we get to that. Yes. So um, what's coming up next? Pointers. Pointers. Okay, suggest you get coffee. Get coffee, something strong, maybe alcohol because we're going to pointers yes. when we come back.